The Kardashians are both America's most popular and powerful celebrity family. The family initially gained attention during the O.J. Simpson case, when Robert Kardashian played a huge role as a lawyer to help Simpson win the case. But the family's popularity exploded in 2003, when Kim Kardashian appeared in a very popular film with Ray J. Kardashians leveraged the success of the film perfectly and used it to build entertainment, reality TV, and fashion empires. With this power, they have access to very popular social circles, which allows them to meet and start relationships with almost anyone on the planet. However, some noticed a curious correlation. Bad luck comes to anyone who dates a Kardashian sister. Huh? One of the earliest instances often cited as evidence for the Kardashian curse is the relationship between Kim Kardashian and Reggie Bush, a former NFL running back. Their relationship in the late 2000s was highly publicized, with them having multiple appearances together in public. Reggie Bush was not only one of the best rookie running backs in the NFL, but he was also gaining an extreme amount of attention in mainstream media thanks to his appearances on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. However, despite their seemingly perfect pairing, trouble began to surface. Some observers online pointed out a downturn in Bush's career. Seemingly happening around the same time, he started dating Kim. Following their breakup in 2010, Bush had his worst season as a pro, only rushing for 150 yards. Thanks to this, the theory of a Kardashian curse was born. But is this so-called Kardashian curse real? Some people online swear by it, with many pointing to Kanye West or Tiga as prime examples. But I am not so convinced. And in this video, I want to dive deeper into the statistics to see if there's any truth to the Kardashian curse. To do this, we will look at a player's stats before, during, and after dating a Kardashian. Then, at the end, we will do a statistical analysis using all the player's data to see if there is a correlation between dating a Kardashian and a decline in performance on the court. We will start by looking at Kim Kardashian's relationships, who surprisingly has only dated one basketball player, Chris Humphreys. In 2011, the two started dating after meeting through then-teammate at the time Jordan Farmer. Barely half a year after dating, the two tied the knot and headed to the altar for an extravagant TV show special for their wedding. But the honeymoon phase crashed quickly. Mere days after their fairy tale wedding special aired, cracks emerged in the relationship. By October, after just 72 days of matrimony, Kim filed for divorce. To add sprinkles on top of this crazy story, Kim, in an interview years after the divorce, confessed she knew the night before that the wedding was a mistake. What? But does this fiasco prove the Kardashian curse? Let's look at the stats. As you can see, there are three columns on the screen. They are separated before, during, and after dating a Kardashian. The time period for before and after stats will be the same as the amount of seasons the couple dated. In this case, the couple only dated for one season. So let's put up the stats for Chris Humphreys before, during, and after dating Kim. As you can see, Chris actually had better stats almost across the board during and after his relationship. So although this doesn't support the idea of a Kardashian curse, maybe the story of Rashad McCants will. Although many of you watching this video don't know Rashad McCants, he was actually one of the best young guards in the NBA when he started dating Khloe Kardashian in 2008. The two were introduced to each other through Reggie Bush, who we talked about earlier. The relationship was highly publicized, as he even made an appearance on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. However, the tires on the relationship fell off quite quickly when the couple split up seven months later, allegedly due to McCants sneaking around with other women. But let's look at the statistics. Here are McCants' stats before before, during, and after dating Khloe Kardashian. McCants was out of the league after the season at the age of 24. In an interview a few years later, he said if he never would have dated Khloe, he would have been a 60 to 70 million dollar player. Khloe's next relationship was with Lamar Odom. The two met after Ron Artest introduced Khloe to Lamar in August 2009. By September of 2009, the two were engaged and got married nine days after getting engaged. From the outside, the relationship looked great as the two had no problems when they started a reality TV show together in 2011. But things got shaky in 2013 when rumors of Lamar cheating on Khloe popped up. On top of this, Odom was arrested for a DUI in August, and Khloe eventually filed for divorce in December. 
December of that same year. Now let's look at the stats. The relationship ended after Lamar retired from the NBA, so there are no stats for the after. I do have to address the fact that there is more to the story after Odom retired, but this is a topic I don't want to get into for this video. The next player Chloe dated is the beard, James Harden. James and Chloe started dating before the start of the 2015 NBA season. The two talked openly about how hard it was to grow their relationship due to their extremely busy schedules. And because of this, the relationship never got too serious and they split after a year. Although both of them came out and said the scheduling is why they broke up, there are still rumors online. Of the many, my favorite rumor is that Harden broke up with Chloe because she smelled awful. Now let's look at the stats. Although the stats don't prove the Kardashian curse, people point to the fact that Harden choked in the playoffs when he was dating Chloe as proof. However, I think this is a weak argument as Harden chokes in the playoffs every year. The last player Chloe dated is probably the most talked about, Tristan Thompson. Oh no! I could probably make an hour long video on the relationship of these two, but I will try to give a really condensed version of the story. The two met in 2016, thanks to an unexpected date set up by Brandon Jennings. The two fell quickly for each other, and by 2017, Tristan was appearing on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. At the end of 2017, the couple announced they were expecting a child. And on April 12, 2018, Chloe gave birth to True. Sadly, this huge day was really dampened by a report made by TMZ, which showed Tristan being intimate with another woman. This was the first of many scandals, which plagued the dysfunctional couple. In the years since, Chloe and Tristan have been off and on, fueled by Tristan continuously cheating on Chloe. In one instance, he cheated on Chloe with one of her best friends. Yet the summer of 2022 brought us one last twist when the pair confirmed they are expecting a second child via surrogate. For six chaotic years, Chloe and Tristan have brought us constant chaos in the form of cheating scandals, second chances, and unexpected pregnancies. But did all of this affect Tristan's performance on the court? Here are the stats. I did my best to try to determine when the relationship ended, but the lines are so blurry that it was hard to figure it out. Now we are moving on to the last sister, Kendall Jenner, who has the greatest starting five of former boyfriends of all time. Holy Although Kendall shit, Jenner shit, is speculated shit. to have dated multiple basketball players, there have only been three confirmed boyfriends. We will start with Blake Griffin. Blake and Kendall started dating in September 2017, when they were spotted together in Malibu having an expensive dinner. Kendall was spotted multiple times throughout the relationship courtside at Clippers games, and the relationship seemed to be going great. However, things took a turn for the worst when Blake was traded to Detroit at the start of 2018. Kendall, who lived in LA at the time, didn't want to travel to the shithole that Detroit is. Over time, the distance strained the relationship, and the two were confirmed to have split when Kendall was spotted with Ben Simmons, who we will talk about next. Now let's look at the stats. Crazily enough, Blake had one of his best seasons as a pro after dating Kendall. Now let's talk about Kendall and Ben. During the 2018 NBA season, Kendall was seen multiple times at the Sixers basketball games. Even one time, she was seen booing Tristan Thompson. Not only this, but she was also seen watching the game next to Ben Simmons' mom. However, the two kind of split up without much publicity. All I could find online were rumors about Simmons cheating on her. Let's look at the stats. The couple was kind of on and off again, so it was hard to track down the exact stats. But clearly, Simmons' career took a nosedive after the relationship. The last player we will look at is Devin Booker. Kendall and Devin started dating at some point in early 2021. Like most of Kendall's relationships, the two rarely made public appearances. But Kendall was seen courtside cheering Booker on when the Suns made the finals, only to lose to the Bucks. There isn't much to talk about with these two, but after two years together, they split up in November of 2022. People Magazine called it a quiet breakup, but this didn't stop Bad Bunny from dissing Devin Booker on his song, Coco Chanel, when he said Sun in Puerto Rico is hotter than in Phoenix. Now let's look at the stats. Now the moment you all have been waiting for, is the Kardashian curse real? Well, I averaged out all of the players' stats before, during, and after dating a Kardashian. So let's look at the results. The average NBA player before dating a Kardashian would put up 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. While dating a Kardashian, the average player would average 14 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. Lastly, after dating a Kardashian, the average player would put up 16.5 points, 7 rebounds, and five assists. The first thing that pops out is the points, which decrease while dating a Kardashian. But is this difference big enough to prove players suffer 
from the Kardashian curse. Well, to do this, we can run a statistical test to determine the p-value of data. For those who don't know, p-value is considered the gold standard test for statistical significance. It is on a scale of 0 to 1, with 1 representing no difference between the statistics and 0 representing a greater difference between the statistics. Any number under 0.05 is considered to be statistically significant. So in our case, if any p-value is under 0.05, then that is a strong indicator of a Kardashian curse. So let's throw up the p-values for our data. As you can see, there is not one p-value under the widely accepted threshold of 0.05. The closest one is the difference in points. The average player does see a drop in points while they are dating a Kardashian of about 13%. But the p-value showed us that this is not a big enough drop to be statistically significant. So with all the data we have available to us, it appears the Kardashian curse does not exist. There are two variables we have to address. One is the age of the player. A player usually enters the prime of his career between the ages of 27 and 32. So a player could have been entering or leaving his prime while dating a Kardashian. Additionally, with data from only eight players over 15 seasons, the sample size is far too small. So if any NBA player wants to help me out and date a Kardashian, so I can get more data, that would be much appreciated. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then subscribe.